Hello, my name's Limey Joe, and this is my beginner's guide to Frostpunk. So let's take a look at what we've got on the screen here, starting top left. You've got coal, which is obviously to power your generator. Um, you've got wood, steel, and steam cores, all of which are used to build buildings. The steam cores are used later on with more advanced buildings. Other side of the temperature, you have got raw food and food rations. So raw food, your hunters collect raw food and then your cooks make that raw food into food rations. Uh, just underneath that, just underneath the food rations, you've got your uh, next few days and that's quite a useful little gauge because in there it shows you when you're likely to get a temperature rise or a temperature fall so it's actually really useful to be able to see what's happening in the near future with regards to the temperature down the bottom so bottom left we've got the objectives and um, they kind of guide you through the game especially early game it's worth following the objectives because it guides you as to what buildings you need to build initially. Towards the bottom, you've got the construction, which is basically all the buildings you can build. In the middle there, you've got discontent and hope, which are fairly apparent. That's where you're, how your people uh, feel about how you're doing. If you hover your mouse over them, then you can see some more information, a sort of breakdown, if you will, of what's affecting those things. After that, a little bit further to the right you've got the book of laws and then you've got the economy button which gives you information about all the various aspects of uh, what you're producing and how much you're using and all that kind of thing so i'm going to circle back to a couple of these things and look at them in more detail let's uh, let's continue playing the uh, the game a little bit so you can see down in the bottom left hand corner you've got your goal which is to activate the generator but ultimately you want to take care of your people. I mean, obviously, the first thing you're going to want to do is take care of uh, your people. And shelter is the is the first thing that your people are going to want. So we're going to go down to the construction icon here and click on that. And see, you've got tabs along the top here, depending on what you want to build. The people tab has the uh, the tents, which is going to be quite nice for your people. You, they, they are not going to want to be out in the balmy minus 20 degree <laughs> degree warmth <laughs> so let's um let's build a few of these you can actually see down here above discontent the stuff that needs doing with regards to your people so here you've got 80 homeless people and we are going to build enough tents to house 80 people Okay, so I've run out of wood, basically. The wood is obviously up here in the, in the top section to build more tents. You can see there are various resources around the local area in piles. So if you click on them, you can see what they are. And also, you see here with the wood crates, you can also assign people. And if you, as go and, if you assign people, they'll just trudge through the snow and go and get those resources. The other option you've got is if you've got a cluster of resources, here where you've got three resources together, you can build a gathering post, which is just here, look. But of course, in order to build a gathering post, I need 15 wood and five steel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick on some of the resources that are not in this cluster here, and we are gonna send our dudes to gather a few resources for us. So the remaining people will start building the shelters, the tents. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna build tents around sort of half of the area, around half of the generator, because as I said previously, there are some buildings that need to be close to the generator in order to work. So obviously we don't want to have to destroy a building we've made because that's wasteful. 
So keeping that in mind, I'm just going to I'm just going to leave a uh, you know around about half or, or at least a quarter of area immediately next to the generator. You can see our hopes are around about half, and our discontent is at nothing at the moment, pretty much. If your discontent gets too high, then the people in your camp basically get uh, upset with you and they will kick you out as their leader and that's it, game over. So be very very wary of not, not getting your discontent up too high. Uh, this seems like a decent time to look at the Book of Laws. So the Book of Laws is basically about what kind of leader you want to be. So you've got various options and you can pick one of these every now and again. There's, a, there's an amount of time that has to pass before you can pick another one. Uh, one tip I would say is that emergency shift is quite useful. If I click on it, you can see what it does is it forces people to work for a period of time longer than their normal working hours. Uh, but early game, I have found that that raises discontent quite badly and um, and every time I've used it early game I've got booted out so as, the, as their leader so I'm not going to pick emergency shift straight away what I am going to do I'm tempted to have child labor child labor is quite useful uh, obviously it gives you a whole bunch of extra people to to work for you and your people are a resource just as much as the actual resources. But I don't actually need child labour at the moment because I don't have anywhere to put them. So I'm not going to worry about that at the moment. In fact, I'm not going to pick any of these at the moment. I'm just going to wait and see what happens. Let's construct a few more shelters. So personally, I like to keep them clustered around to get each other. It helps out later because you can heat areas One more thing I will just touch upon whilst they're trudging backwards and forwards getting the resources we need. If you click on this button up here by the minus 20, it shows you how warm all the areas are. So because minus 20 actually in this game is actually relatively warm, you know, it's like a warm summer's day minus 20. It, you can see that these, you hover over each tent, you can see they're all in livably warm condition because they've got some insulation some buildings have better insulation than others, so obviously if they've got more insulation then they can cope with colder weather and still be quite livable. And you can see on our little scale up here with regards to the temperature, there is a, a significant drop in temperature coming just around day four. So two levels is a significant drop in temperature, so we have to keep that in mind. Let's build a few more tents. Right, so I've gone right the way around a good half of it. I'm gonna leave this little section here for the other buildings which need to be built close. The roads are also in the construction area and the roads have to go out like a spoke on a bicycle wheel, basically. So they go out from the center, out towards the outside edge you can go once you've once you've built one out then you can also go round in a circle as well so it literally ends up like a like a, a strange bicycle wheel the other thing that you can is, is worth noting is that you can put buildings down and then you can just build a road in between them you don't actually have to build the road first so i'm going to crack down a couple more tents here try and keep as many of my people under shelter as possible So this yellow circle here with something in it, that is when your people want to tell you something. Uh, so the heating is off, the generator is off, people are afraid they'll freeze to death in their sleep if you don't at least turn it on for night time. Well, we don't have enough coal really to be turning it on. So, And to be fair, minus 20 is not that cold in this game. So we are going to hang fire and they will just have to suffer the cold for a bit. We want to build up a nice reserve of coal so when the temperature drops by two levels down to minus 40 we've got enough to deal with it 
If they start to whinge, although our discontent starts to rise because they're cold, I may have to turn the generator on. So down the bottom here, you can see people are starting to get sick. So anyway, people are starting to get sick because it's cold. So what we are going to do, if I can afford it, is I'm going to build a medical post to deal with them. And because we've left a space here around the inside edge, I can build the medical post in a position that will be warm enough for it to operate. And the other thing we're going to need is obviously food. We've already got 100 raw food and we're going to need some food rations. So whilst I'm at it, if I've got enough wood, I am going to build... No, I don't have enough wood. Okay, so I need a cookhouse. So I need 20 wood for a cookhouse. So I'm going to... The first thing I'm going to do is build a cookhouse once I've, we've got 20 more wood. This game forces you to make harsh decisions. The, uh, the Book of Laws in particular has some, some very harsh decisions. So, I mean, things like child labour, for example, I mean, obviously in an ideal world you wouldn't, but, uh, but in this game, it can be so useful that you end up, you know, putting the children to work anyway. Okay, that's my medical centre. So we need engineers. You can see I can only use engineers in the medical centre. So now I can build a cookhouse which also has to be on the inner ring because it's got um, relatively low insulation and it needs warmth. So you can see we've got no people waiting to be treated now and we've got four people being treated. Underneath Hope you can see people being treated. Right, let us build a hunter's hut because we are going to need some... we are basically going to need some food, some more food. It's still minus 20 so I'm still not going to turn the generator on yet because, you know, I'm mean like that. A cemetery is popular. I'm going to sign the, that. Once you've signed one, once you've signed one of these, then you have to build the building quite quickly. It's like a little mission in its own, a little side mission, if you will. So make sure that if you do a, a uh, if you click on a, a law that has a building associated with it, that you're ready to, to do it. Because if you leave that, and don't do it. If you tell people they're going to get a cemetery and then they don't get one, then they get upset about it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start building a few roads out to the places where I want gathering centers as well because that way we'll be prepared. Roads do take resources though, so you can't be too you can't be too you can't splash them around too much. You can't uh, can't build uh, just tons of roads because you'll just use up all your wood. But I'm going to build this out there like that so I can put the cemetery on the outer edge rather than on the inner edge. I want to keep this inner edge in case we need something else. And I may also put the hunter's hut next to this road as well on the outer, on the outer edge of our current city. The workshop here is how you do your research. And obviously you're going to want that reasonably quickly because obviously you can upgrade the generators and all that kind of stuff. One tip I will give you for a bit later on is that later on you send scouts out and if you send scouts out to various locations you pick, they pick up resources and if those scouts then get killed whilst they're out and the, those resources get lost uh, I didn't realise this so I put them in harm's way whilst they had a whole bunch of resources and I lost a whole bunch of stuff Okay, so now we have got the big freeze. You can see that around about day six, it's going to rise back up to about minus 30, but we are going to want to switch the generator on now. And we are going to start to see people get ill, basically, because they're, they're freezing. Because even though I've got the generator blasting away, the absolute best case scenario for our people is chili, which obviously is not very pleasant so so if the cookhouse and the medical posts were on the outer ring and they were cold like these tents are they would basically stop working you can see that it's guiding us towards building a workshop now and a beacon which is what you need to send out expeditions right we're going to build a workshop because we need one so you can build a workshop earlier, but to be honest, you're better off just 
waiting a little bit and getting your resources up and running before you start building building your workshop. The game kind of guides you towards that by not asking you to build the workshop too early. Okay, and this is the technology tree. So you've got heating, steam hub or heaters, heaters directly onto your workplaces, heats the workplaces, steam hub you know heats a whole area personally I prefer steam hubs just because you can use them to heat your living areas the beacon which is obviously the thing you need to send scouts out various improvements in terms of gathering resources and stuff to do with food health and shelter personally I like hunters gear because food does become a bit of an issue unless you build a lot of hunters sheds so I am gonna go with hunters gear straight off the bat you can see it also takes a bit of resources to uh, to research stuff and now you can see that the technology is ticking up quite slowly down here in the bottom leftish of the screen I think this covers the basics. Uh, prepare yourself for some harsh decision making later on in the game and uh, hope this has been useful. Thanks for watching.